All right, what is up, everybody? My name is Justin, also known as Shit Just Works. And if you are new to the channel, well, you're in the right spot for God knows how much Legends of Runeterra content. We got everything from deck videos, which I haven't done in a while. Getting back to those soon, though. Uh, but also tons of tournament footage from all the biggest tournaments around for Legends of Runeterra. And as this video uh, will show you, new reveal stuff. So. Pretty excited for all the new cards that they just revealed. We have the next expansion uh, coming out, which is Monuments of Power. And from the looks of it, we are getting the full suite of Bilgewater. It's yet to be determined what the other region will likely be. Uh, there are, you know, with what was released in Call of the Mountain, there's four regions, I think, that are left that haven't been fully revealed as far as all of the cards in them. I think Noxus is one of them, as well as P and Z, Bilgewater, and there's one more. I don't know what it is, but there's another one, so I'm pretty sure. Um, and as many of you probably know, if you keep up on Reddit and a lot of the other spoilers and stuff, you're probably aware of the champions that will likely be revealed. Pretty sure we're getting Tom Kench for Bilgewater. But until we do get Tom Kench, we got all these new Bilgewater cards and a couple Shadow Isles cards uh, revealed as well as a new card type in Landmarks. And not going to lie, with the set being Monuments of Power... I don't know why they didn't call them monuments. I mean, I guess it's kind of weird. I guess land landmark, I do think, sounds better. But if the set is monuments of power, and then I don't, I don't know. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> but I do care about the cards, and they are pretty freaking cool. Uh, pretty excited to have this new card type in the game. And without further ado, with that said, let's go ahead and get into everything they reveal. All right, so before we get to the monuments, wow, see, I just said, before we get to the landmarks, I'm going to want to keep calling them monuments because I'm going to get monuments of power confused with landmarks probably for the next month. So I hope you guys are ready for that. Uh, but anyways, we have lounging lizard. So this is, uh, this is interesting and this seems to be a theme amongst a lot of these bilge water cards. Um, I imagine, if I remember correctly, Soraka is a Targonian champion. So, I think they're trying to kind of have some synergies now between Bilgewater and Targon. So, we'll see what happens with that. The reason I say that is because, A, they already started releasing some Soraka-esque cards. And, B, this deals damage to itself, which is perfect for healing. So, you are going to want to run cards that will be able to heal this unit up in your deck. And beyond that is a 3 cost 3-5 three, elusive, which is obviously highly overstated for an elusive unit. It should probably be something like a 2-3. Uh, we have other elusive units like Shadow Assassin is 3 cost. That's a 2-2, two, two, but you draw a card. You could probably add one more attack or one more health for that to be evenly balanced. Uh, so, there's a lot going on there as far as... Lounging Lizard is concerned in the uh, the use cases that it has. Now, what I will say is that it's round start. So it's not like when you summon it, it just deals two damage once. For that reason, I actually don't think this card is good. Uh, I'm a little disappointed too because it's going to be really hard. I mean, I guess, I guess I can't fully evaluate the card until additional healing comes out because we have things like Guiding Touch but and Star Shaping even, but those are one-time heals. And obviously, we can't really evaluate this on something that is only a one-time heal. The only consistent heal that we have right now is that it's like broad back something. I forget, but you basically, it deals damage to itself every turn and it heals your Nexus. And that card is good for healing your Nexus, just not your followers or champions. So I think once other cards come out that consistently heal your followers and champions, this might be a little bit more useful. But for now not looking so hot so we'll see what the rest of the cards have in store and keeping with the theme of dealing damage to itself we have boxtopus not boxtopus boxtopus it's like it's like oct oct you see what they're with the yeah so and anyways so two cost three four you play it deals three to itself and it has challengers so it's essentially a three one challenger when you compare it to something like jaw hunters jaw hunters is a four one challenger costs one more but gives you a free sea monster. So uh, as far as balance is concerned, I actually love this. I think it's pretty good. Uh, it also, obviously there's an inherent disadvantage to playing something with one health because of things like Vile Feast and Unspeakable Horror. 
and you know withering whale and so many one damage cards those just all happen to be in shadow isles uh i think it's good i think it's balanced i think it's good and i think again once there's additional heal support for this card it will be even better because a two cost three four with challenger is really really good if you can get the heal off on it that's incredible especially if it's heal that you're not using inherent card advantage for something that's happening consistently some sort of like aoe heal uh, that you have on your entire side of the field so the other one dealing damage to yourself every turn not so hot this one dealing damage one time and it has challenger pretty hot i like it so definitely a great card very excited to see this see some play and again another self-inflicting damage card crusty codger and this is interesting because I was not expecting the... All right, let me... I don't know how to put this. So I've, I've talked before about every class kind of having its its associated one cost 2-2 two, two card, whether it's Bark Beast, where it's kind of splitting the difference between, you know, 1-1 one, one and 3-3. Three, three. You know, there's a, a lot of things going on. Jagged Butcher, Scythria. So this is actually... Jagged Butcher is already in Bilgewater. This is another one drop 2-2 two, two in Bilgewater. The only difference is this could actually be a 2-4 if you pair it with heal. So I like this. Again, it's a 2-2 two, two base, kind of like Jagged Butcher, but it has an upside where if you have heal, you could get it to a 2-4. Whereas Butcher, if you plunder, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Love this. Love this idea. I'm a little bit, I don't know. Like I, I almost feel like this should be in Targon, which is weird because it has the the healing in it i i don't know I, i'm a little it's just really weird to me that this isn't in targon but i the card art and stuff definitely makes sense that it's in bilgewater i just feel like this type of effect should have been a one cost targon unit but who knows maybe they have some other plans we do have the one cost zero three targon unit which uh gains whenever you heal so gains attack but the problem with that in star shepherd is that it becomes like a 2-3 if you get its effect off once, and it can actually stack. To me, that's not that's not what these one cost 2-2 two, two units are trying to do to, to, you know, keeping things stable across multiple regions. So, I don't know. But anyways, I like the card. We'll see what happens again with the heal. And the last self-inflicting card, before we get into some hella interesting spells and then the landmarks, not monuments, uh, even though the set's name is Monuments of Power, uh, is Fortune Croaker. I love this card design. This is uh, something that is in, I think, a lot of different games. Magic is notorious for having these sort of uh, continuous trigger effects that you can use to draw multiple cards. Now, Fortune Croaker might not be a continuous effect, but it is a one-time effect where you can deal one to it, which essentially makes it a 2-2, two -two, or you, you actually have to deal one to it because it is a play effect, and to another ally, and you can draw one. So it now becomes a two two a two cost two two with a draw card which i mean when you look at something like black market merchant which is this is exactly why black market merchant was busted uh this is black market merchants a two one for two that needs plunder to happen uh this is essentially similar right you're dealing one additional damage to another unit which brings us down to a two one very balanced as far as the stats are concerned with what's expected for the game plus this combos well with things that trigger when you deal damage to them or you play this something like you know with like a cursed keeper right then you get why do i say cursed i did this the other day when i was casting it's cursed it's cursed keeper what the i don't know why i say cursed like it i like read it differently because it's a card anyways cursed keeper you can kill cursed keeper with this card and then you get a four three and you draw a card it's good so anyways, I love this. I love the synergy that this card can have with other stuff. Um, it's, I think, going to be more of a combo-oriented card, especially because something like Endorse Spiders can't fit this in because you need Frail Yord and Shadow Isles. So I'd be curious to see what sort of maybe Shadow Isles and Bilgewater decks pop up out of a card like this. Next up is Crumble. So this is kill an ally to kill a unit or destroy a landmark and a landmark is is what we're going to see in a second landmarks are essentially if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh or magic or, or whatever it's like a continuous spell that sits on the field or like an artifact that just chills there for a little while and uh, at some point you might be able to sacrifice it your opponent can kill it and that's exactly what this card can do is it will be able to target landmarks and kill those as well as a unit so 
if you have dinky smaller units around, uh, this is great removal for something like a token deck in the future. Maybe some sort of spider deck uh, becomes prevalent again because it's able to have some cheap removal now. Problem is, as per usual, this is a two effect. It's kill an ally to kill a unit, which means if you are sacrificing something tiny like a spiderling, it makes it that much easier for your opponent to negate it. They can kill the spiderling, then they negate this effect. So uh, I don't know, with it being slow for that reason, <clears throat> I think this has some pretty niche uses. I don't think it's as good as uh, as it might seem at first glance. I do, this does beg the question, you know, what would the cost be if this was something like a fast spell? Then it turns into sort of like a Noxian Fervor, right? I think being at six, if Vengeance at, is at seven, I think being at six and making it fast makes sense. Um, you know, destroying your own unit, but now you can do it in response to something, right? If they go to kill your unit, then you can play crumble and kind of reverse it back on them. I personally would like it better like that. This slow speed stuff you can is obviously a pretty big disadvantage. I will say crumble this is this marks one of the first slow speed removal spells for shadow isles so we had targon with all the slow speed removal with all the celestial stuff obviously it, it, that's its inherent drawback when you play celestials is if your opponent opens open attacks um you know they don't get punished really so this same deal if you are playing crumble now it kind of gives shadow isles two different options you can have the reactive stuff like vengeance or you can have um, stuff that kind of punishes development a little bit more like crumble but the problem is crumbles effect wants to be reactive i feel so i'm not crazy about this being slow speed i don't think it'll see an incredible amount of play but uh, it's okay it's not necessarily a bad card it is an okay effect and another removal quote unquote for landmarks is sunk cost and if anybody remembers Riptide, Riptide is uh, when you have a Nautilus on the field, you shuffle something back in your opponent's deck or a unit back in your opponent's deck. That costs four. This costs eight, but is slow speed. So again, uh, you know, if you compare this to something like Vengeance, all right, the benefits that you get, and I almost wanted to say, I can't get Death Rattle out of my head. That's how long I played Hearthstone for. Um, the last breath effect of whatever you are targeting would not trigger. I guess that's okay. Um, but you're also paying one more than you would for Vengeance. Not only are you paying one more than you would for Vengeance, it's also slow. So it's two, to me, that's that that's two very big differences from Vengeance. And I don't know if the one cost more. I, I don't I don't think this card merits costing one more just because it's shuffling it back into the deck. It's basically a vengeance that says does not get last breath effects. But it costs one more, and I don't I don't like that trade-off uh, really at all. Now, it does also target a landmark, which depending on how prevalent landmarks are, this might see some play. But now again, slow speed ugh, just feels so terrible. Uh, these big spells that are slow speed kind of need to have this, this larger overarching uh, field effect, like something... All right, so when you have something like Ruination, it resets the whole field, right? When you have the harrowing, it gives you this giant field or this giant OTK win condition and something like Zombie Ash. This is one unit it's getting rid of. Like Vengeance is is barely playable just because it's only seven mana as opposed to eight, but that's fast speed. You can re be reactive with that. This I feel like is far too much of an investment to actually see too mu uh, that much play, regardless of how good landmarks become, because there will be other uh, you know, options for removing landmarks like we just saw. So um, I don't think this card is that great either, but we shall see uh, how much play this gets. All right, and we have two landmarks revealed, one for Bilgewater, one for Shadow Isles. God, I'm so excited for this new card type right now. This is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be awesome for uh, just the game and the competitive scene in general. I think this is gonna add just that nice little twist that the game needed. Pretty cool to see this too midway through the expansion. So it kind of like, I feel like there's a lot of hype around that first part of the expansion and Call of the Mountain. Now we have Monuments of Power. I don't think people were as excited for it, but now that something like Landmarks have been revealed, I think people, their interest is a little peak now. They're like, oh, hey, we were just expecting, you know, regular cards to get released, some more champions, maybe Tom Kench, but no, we got Landmarks and Vaults of Helia. All right, this is a five cost, Round start, kill your most expensive ally to summon an ally from your deck that costs one more. Very important there that it is ally. It means it could be a champion. It's very, very important. 
um, not followers. So I think that this is going to be very interesting. I'm trying to think off the top of my head some nice you know combos that this could be used with. I feel like Zombie Ash might be able to use this just to pull Ash a little bit quicker. Um, this might also be able to be used in ramp. You know, you, you pair this with something like a Trindamir or just, you know, larger units in general. Uh, I don't know, or Trundle, like Trundle Trindamir with Vaults of Helia might be pretty good. Um, just spitting off things here. I don't know. This this is definitely interesting. It's also good for the self-inflicting decks with uh, you know, something like Neverglade Collector where you can get that consistent damage with the Collector off over and over again by tributing units. I think this opens up a lot of archetypes uh, to consideration that might not have been played as much before. They've been played, just not as much. Uh, Phantom Prankster comes to mind as well, so I like this. So this means Prankster Burn might be a little bit more efficient, a little bit more reliable, consistent. I like it. I love this card a lot. All right, and we have a cheaper landmark in the Slaughter Docks. First off, love these uh, the names and the locations here, but Round Start Toss 1 which is pretty good. And then if you are deep, destroy me to summon a random sea monster. So this is essentially just an assistant in getting deep that much faster. And then it automatically summons a sea monster once you actually go deep. So this is nice because if you are playing larger sea monsters, you're almost always going to get your mana's worth out of this. It's basically an investment of three mana to maybe summon something that costs five, six, or seven. Now, the problem with this is that if it's summoned something like Devourer, it's not so hot. So this might actually like kind of now make two different diverging strategies for sea monsters, which I love. I love that. I love when there's archetypes that have archetypes within the archetypes, if that makes sense. Like we're seeing that with Lee Sin a lot right now where there's multiple ways of running Lee Sin. So I love this. If this means that there's two different types of deep decks, I think that's going to be great because up until now, there's really just like turbo deep and deep. But those to me really still feel similar. They still run the same core deep monsters. It's just how fast do you want to go deep. So this I think would actually make two diverging strategies and it would be super good, um, super cool to play and just super good for the game in general. All right, that's it guys and gals. I am so excited for this set. Oh my God, I am excited to cast some more games too once, uh, once these bad boys make it into some competitive decks and yeah, this is honestly everything that's been popping lately with the news and Riot and everything going on with Legends of Runeterra. This game is on fire and I am loving it right now. So hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. As always, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button on the video. And as always, everybody stay healthy, stay positive. I hope it just works for you and peace out.